Europeans enter a new Europe. The podcast about inspiring projects all over Europe with Jana, Jose, Paula, Roxana. Hello, everyone. This is Jose from Europeans into a new Europe, and welcome to another episode. I'm very happy to be back once more. And today I'm here with Lida. She is a member of uh, the EYP governing body. And uh, I met her a few weeks ago or weeks. No, not weeks. It feels like it was so recent, but a few months ago uh, in Brussels in um, the Level Up event, as uh, we've talked in the previous episode. And I wanted to bring her here so we could uh, discuss more about what the EYP is and yeah, share this uh, project uh, with you. So thank you, Lita, for accepting the invitation. Thank you very much for inviting. I'm very happy to be here and very excited for the podcast. So my first question to you is initially, like, how did you join the UIP and why? Let me start with uh, telling you that I am originally from Armenia, mm -hmm. which is important in this case, because when we talk about something, um, uh, including the words European and Parliament, we immediately think about the European Union. So when I was 17, uh, so around six years ago, um, I, s I just started my degree in university. And at some point I noticed that there is uh, a conference promotion for the conference and a lot of nice posters um, that we would be hosting European Youth Parliament national session. And I was very excited about that. I had no idea what is the concept of uh, the European Youth Parliament, but I immediately signed up. I submitted my application and I was very excited when um, I heard that I am selected for it. Um, and when I arrived on that day in the morning for the team building, as we usually start the conferences, I was very surprised, I would say positively, that it is an organization with a lot of young people uh, from different countries. So that's how I got involved. Firstly, I had no idea what is going to happen, but then I joined it and got very involved. And you had no fears to join it. That's really good. I have. Um, so, yeah, now I guess it's uh, relevant to mention what the UIP is and what does it stand for? Uh, so could you describe like what do you do in this conference that you mentioned? So EYP is the European Youth Parliament, which was created in 1987. So which means that this year it will be already 36 years of this educational platform uh, being platform for um, making sure that it helps young people to become active mm -hmm. citizens, sharing knowledge, sharing their culture, promoting diversity and uh, intercultural dialogue. And if anyone is interested in these types of activities, political engagement or uh, active uh, citizenship, would it be possible for anyone to join? How does it work? Yes, of course. So we are active in 40 European countries. Uh, so in any of them, um, we're organizing conferences and a number of training events. So there are a lot of different projects hosted by um, EYP. And applying is very simple. Um, I would say the majority of our uh, participants are aged among 16 to 27, but we do not have any age requirements. It can be less, it can be more. So the application process is very simple. You just submit the application uh, and then the organizing team is getting in touch with you and you are applying and joining the conference or the training event. Okay. And if as someone who's listening to us has a doubt whether they should do it or not, is there anything you would uh, tell them to do? Not to hesitate. Yes, they should definitely do it. <laughs> definitely. Why you think so? For many reasons, it is firstly an incredible place to meet new people. Mm -hmm. So meeting new friends uh, from your own country, from other countries, from 40 or more different countries. Uh, secondly, improving certain skills, be it language skills, because um, it is a lot about using English during the conferences and discussing very important topics. And then also communication skills and a lot of different types of soft skills. Um, then, of course, get, getting 
a new understanding of global issues, what is happening in the world, how can young people contribute to providing solutions. So in UIP, I would say every person can choose whatever they want to develop and what they want to take out. And it is really the beauty of UIP, in my opinion. No, that's good that uh, you have some sort of uh, freedom or independence in what you can develop for yourself, depending on where you stand and what your skills are. And Definitely. Okay, very good. I mentioned earlier that you're now a member of the governing body of the UIP. And I wanted to know what exactly you do in, uh, in this role. And second, why did you decide to apply for it? Because I know that you had elections and you were one of the elected members. So um, why did you do it? And what are you doing? So the governing body is the... Um, are the six people who are the strategic decision uh, makers. They are setting the agenda for the organization and contributing to its development. Mm -hmm. So making sure that there is cooperation between all the stakeholders, introducing the organization to different um, sponsors and partners. So I would say it required quite a lot of understanding, of course, to be part of the body which is running the organization and contributing to it. You obviously need to have experience and also dedication and a lot of passion for that organization. So after being involved for six years um, in the network and participating in more than 40 conferences and training events, I decided that it is probably the time. Also, when you have the experience and you see how beautiful is the organization, but obviously we can be even better, uh, you know that you can have the contribution and you definitely have the willingness to put two years of active work into the project. That's what motivated me to apply. Very inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> About the activities, I wanted to know a little bit more like if you could guide us through like what like a con EYP conference is like or a training how how it looks so um, just kind of like try to describe like the last uh, conference EYP you've had and how it how it is so like what can we expect uh, imagine like it's our first uh, time going to an EYP event so um, yeah how is it like so if it is the first ever event the most typical event that you would find yourself in would be a regional selection conference okay. of any national committee in UAP uh, which are small scale events usually around three days participants arrive uh, the delegates the participants and uh, they start with team building in their committees so mm -hmm. we have around maybe eight for instance, committees, which are, which are named by the committees of the European Parliament, for example, Envy Committee, which would be discussing one topic uh, about the environment. Mm -hmm. So they are coming, they are meeting with the rest of their committee, and they start the, the team building together with their committee and their chairperson. So they uh, the entire day is dedicated to them getting to know each other, to uh, playing some games, to un making sure that there is very nice communication in the team. Yeah. And the second day would be dedicated to the committee work, which means that the, each committee uh, would be drafting a resolution on their concrete committee and their topic. Mm -hmm. So understanding what are all the issues about that topic and then designing the solutions. And the last day would be dedicated to the General Assembly, which is the, uh, the place where all the committees come together. They present their resolutions, they, de they debate on the resolutions, they ask each other questions. And it is a lot about public speaking and developing their um, public speaking skills. Like this is the regional one. How does it differ with national level and international level? Yes, they are definitely different. So for regional level, you would expect to have participants from the concrete region of the concrete country. Mm -hmm. um, the officials of the event might be coming from other countries as well, because we try to make sure that we have as diverse environment as possible. So officials from different national committees are coming, applying, joining the session and trying to provide the most EYP experience possible. A national session is firstly a little bit longer than a regional one. Okay. Um, then you have much more diversity among participants. So they are already from the entire country, different regions of the same country. 
The international session is a very different concept okay. uh, because it is the flagship event of the entire organization. Mm -hmm. So it does not belong to the national committee, but it belongs to EYP uh, as an entire organization. So we have two flagship events, two international sessions uh, per year now. And they have their concrete constraints as well. They are the longest sessions that you can have in the European Youth Parliament mm -hmm. um, and the maximum amount of people as well. We have around 300 people coming from 40 countries uh, of Europe, which means that it is as diverse and as um, incredible as it can be. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And like in the regional and the national um, events, Are the topics like usually the same or like the committee, the committees are always the same or no? No, not the necessarily. Cannot, not necessarily. Okay. So th we have a lot of committees in the European Parliament and it really depends um, on the academic board of every conference okay. on f what will be the committees because the president of the session together with the vice presidents that they draft the topics mm -hmm. and according to the topics they do the committee allocations and the topics are also very different from one session to another exactly. there obviously can be some similarities but we're always trying to come up with um, more recent and more interesting topics so no eyp is the same basically No, definitely no. We have the same values, the same culture, but no session is exactly uh, similar. Okay, I, I think now we have a good grasp of what you do precisely and how people can join and uh, how they can improve themselves. And <clears throat> I would like to ask you, I, I guess, a more philosophical, introspective question. And what role you think the EYP has in changing young people and how they are engaged in society, in their regions, and in their country, and even at the European level. Like, How relevant do you think that the UIP is for strengthening political participation? I think that the most important thing UIP does as a network is just creating the space for people to be able to access informal education and just developing themselves. And I think it is definitely mm -hmm. the driver to any type of change and any type of improvement. So EYP is a non-political uh, platform. So it does not promote any type of engagement okay. uh, in terms of politics. However, it brings together people and discusses vital issues. So then every person can um, decide for themselves how involved they want to be in anything, in their country, in civic engagement. Mm -hmm. And then they can also obviously um, understand what are the topics that there are the most important ones for them personally. So it helps to create very good understanding of global issues that are important uh, for us, for the entire Europe, for young people, for specific communities. And that's how um, EYP is definitely contributing to the development. Yeah, I think now that you're mentioning that, I was thinking about how different it might be to like regular schooling because you like from the books, you learn about history and geography and all different types of things, but it's very much textbook knowledge, you know, mm -hmm. and the things that you that pass on the news, like when you, when I was growing up watching the news is not what you, what you learn at school. And what what has you from what you were describing now? It feels like the UIP kind of fills in a gap in the um, conventional school system, in terms of making and allowing for people to discuss topics that are like about things that are happening like in the moment, right? Yeah, I think it is giving a very fresh perspective, and I, from my personal uh, point of view, young people can be inspired by other young people and they are inspiring a lot um, our older generation as well. So when young people come and they start debating, what I see is they are very willing to make the change yeah. and they are very objective and they understand very well what is happening. They obviously do a lot of research during and before the conference itself mm -hmm. and they come already with a um, very solid understanding of the theoretical, let's say, part. But then through discussion together, they understand what are the potential consequences of what they propose, for instance, they like their solutions, what will be the difficulties, how they will overcome it. Mm -hmm. And then 
obviously they shape the understanding of what their local governments or national governments or the European Union and any country should do in order to overcome the problems that we're facing now. That's very interesting, actually. Young people meeting and discussing and being very engaged. It sometimes feels like when young people who are very uh, motivated when they discuss with older generations and they're the only ones in the room, they're, they're not really as respected as uh, older generations because they don't have experience and whatnot. So um, it's very interesting to, to, to see that there's, I mean, a network, uh, uh, an association uh, promoting this type of uh, dialogue between young people that hopefully... Uh, would help these same young people communicate better with older generations as well. Because as you mentioned, like someone from six with 16 years old to someone that has 25 has completely different uh, perspectives of life, right? And if you can meet someone uh, from uh, different ages, but still young uh, through the UIP, uh, I guess maybe you can also like develop skills that enables you to communicate with generations after those. Yes, definitely. That's why it is very interesting to see the work of each committee, because in each committee you have from 8 to 12 people, for instance, and their ages are very different. Uh, but firstly, that's why we do the team building events to make sure that we're bringing people to the same level of being, uh, being comfortable with yeah. uh, communicating with the rest of the group. And then they start discussing more complicated issues. They always start with knowledge sharing. So it certainly goes from zero uh, until we bring the committee to the stage. Yeah, the General Assembly. No, that's great. Is there anything you would like to share about the UIP? Or because I'm done with my questions. Lovely. Uh, is there anything in particular you'd like to share, like a fun story from an event or uh, I don't know? Well, everything in UIP, to be honest, is fun. But... I think what unites, like what makes EYP so, sp uh, so special is like this spirit that is being created. Okay. Because we have also this informal Facebook groups, for instance, like uh, for people to connect when they visit uh, different countries. For instance, if you want to visit another city and you don't know anyone, it is the first place where people would text each other. They don't know each other. There are thousands of young people in this chat. Yeah. And they would just text and ask if someone, for instance, can host them or if someone would like to meet for lunch or go to a museum or just have a tour around the city. And I think it is one of the things that makes it so special that people don't know each other, but they feel that they do know each other. And once they meet, it is not strange because it is just, yes, this is another EYP here. This makes complete sense. This is wonderful. Yeah, to a certain extent, it's like meeting someone from your nationality abroad or something, exactly, I guess. Exactly, exactly. You just know each other and there are a lot of things to discuss, even if you have no idea who the person in front of you is. Oh yeah, that's, that's very interesting. Yeah. So to finalize the episode, I have a, a question that we usually ask the guests in the end. Tell me. And the question is, what is something you would want to have in a new Europe? That's a very nice question. <laughs> very, very nice. Probably there isn't just one thing that you would like, but <laughs> let's start from something. Well, I would really like to have better understanding among generations and nationalities, perfect cultural environment and acceptance. Mm -hmm. So putting aside any type of differences yeah um and miscommunications and yeah. just appreciating the diversity that's one of the things that i would definitely like to have more because there is the capacity for that there are so many different people and different cultures but putting difference the differences aside and just taking the advantage of what we have that would be great yes beautiful and i think you kind of are doing that already with the uip maybe that's why you feel that it's possible right trying trying <laughs> yes exactly definitely okay thank you then thank you for uh, joining us for the ones who are listening you can uh, follow us on instagram and facebook and i'll uh, leave us a review and share the episode and see you next time thank you very much ciao